Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I am talking about natural resources and the rich man. Natural resources and the rich man, uh, but there are also those uh, women out there as well who, unfortunately, according to the parable uh, of the rich fool, are foolish, okay, when it comes to natural resources, and we're going to get into that there are 10 natural resources in the world, top 10, I should say. There's many, but there are the top 10 natural resources. And these tend to show up in our media quite a bit, good, bad, and otherwise. Number one is water. Number two is air. Number three is coal. Number four is oil. Number five is natural gas. Number six is phosphorus. Number seven are other minerals like gypsum and phosphate and bentonite and mica and titanium and zirconium. And these are usually found in the seabeds along the coastal plains, okay? There is also iron, soil, forest, and timber, okay? Now, if there is a community, a city, a country, you name it, that is in need of any one of these natural resources, then they are going to do what it takes to obtain more of that particular natural resource that they lack, OK, if a natural resource becomes poisoned or um, is uh, just de um, depleting, then there are going to be measures put in place to clean up that natural resource or to get more of it. OK, and anytime you get man's chemicals involved, woman's ideas that are not uh, biblically based, not centered on common sense or just plain old just ignorant then there's going to be problems men and women are flawed and so it would make sense to go to the Lord and pray and ask him about whatever the problem is concerning a natural resource but does man do that uh, <laughs> man thinks he's God woman thinks she's God so when I looked at these natural resources I noticed that each one of them had their share of issues over the years and have shown up in media. Water being uh, that there were those individuals who wanted to do some <clears throat> creative things with water, ended up poisoning people. Um, there was, of course, air, and we talk about air every now and again. Um, when people are putting things like chemtrails up in, in the uh, skies and so forth. And then there's, you know, a slew of people that become ill and they end up in the hospitals and so forth. But what was the point of putting the chemicals up in the air? You know, and some folks have collected these particles and they have had them researched and then they, you know, are, are angered because their community is sick. Um, and then we heard about coal, especially uh, during the Trump campaign and, and uh, bringing coal mines back and so forth, okay? Uh, anytime someone or a group says that there is less of something, that means more digging. That means looking for places where we can get more uh, of the natural resource so that we can have uh, cheaper sources uh, to supply our needs. So coal being used for fuel, that would make sense. And then, of course, oil. And there was a lot of fracking that took place, especially during uh, the Obama administration. And when this happened, that also caused problems because now you got, you know, areas where, uh, you know, there's been some uh, destruction. Um, then, of course, people are disturbed and then they go out and they protest. We don't want this, but we need more of this. Well, you better figure out a better way because not in our community. OK, but there are undiscovered oil fields and there has been quite a few uh, projects uh, all around uh, the United States trying to uncover these oil fields. Then there is uh, natural gas and we know that natural gas comes with uh, its share of um, of uh, problems, especially when you can't afford it like you once did. OK, so some folks, they didn't even have their furnaces on this past winter season and went out and bought things um, that brought up their electric bill. OK. But there is uh, there there are those uh, folks who try to come up with all sorts of ways to use natural gas as an as an alternative fuel. OK, but uh, it runs out quickly when it's used as such. So. 
phosphorus and other minerals and iron and soil and forests and timber and all of these things that are used as natural resources or 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 our natural resources are used for all sorts of things but there are those that are concerned that the more you use these natural resources for all sorts of stuff uh, sooner or later it's going to run out okay but the way I look at it is is that God he supplies all our needs and that is not a worry for the Christian it's a worry for those people who are using and abusing and doing things that are you know wrong okay but for most of us who are believers, we know that God supplies our needs. And so we don't get hung up on things being used up and no, you know, but there are those that will preach about, uh, just not being greedy for natural resources. Okay. Um, because there are people who do this sort of thing. And then when you're greedy for natural resources, uh, then what happens is, uh, you end up angering God because God is not in support of greed. This is once again, why we have the problems that we have with other countries. Okay. Because our country, unfortunately, and I shouldn't say we, because we're not a part of this, but our country will go into other countries. And if people are not working with our country, then our country comes up with some little shady dealings and some ways to get them to behave okay this doesn't happen all the time but it does happen now I'm, I gotta take you over to Luke 12 13 through 21 the parable of the rich fool because God he makes it plain about this sort of thing that rich people do in the new international version of the Bible it says someone in the crowd said to him teacher tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me and Jesus replied, man who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you. Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Now you got to tell some family members this, right? We can see this on an international level, national level. But do we see this when it comes to some family members who they're just greedy, greedy for their possessions, right? And then they'll do just about anything to make sure that they don't have to share uh, their possessions with anyone, uh, especially if they're not a favorite. And he told them this parable, the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Okay. <laughs> then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. And isn't this what a lot of people do when they retire? Right? <laughs> but God, listen here. God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Okay? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. How many times does... <sighs> Does people of God have to ask? How many times does the people of God have to go into territories and pretty much demand what has been promised to them? How many times does the people of God have to remind rich folks that we're out here, that we're struggling, that we need support? How many times? You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. God put all these natural resources out here and people are benefiting from them. Many, many organizations and individuals are benefiting from them and they're not thinking about helping anyone. They're not thinking about helping anyone but themselves or their favorites. We're not supposed to be greedy. Owning a lot of stuff is not going to make us feel safe. Okay? It's not. But some people, they believe that, oh, yes, it will. Oh, if I store up resources, oh, I'm going to be safe. Okay, sure, you keep on believing that. I read the scripture to you. We're not even supposed to be worrying about what we eat or what we wear. God, he directs us to the birds, right? To the crows and so forth. 
They don't even have what we got. And he takes care of them. And if you need a spiritual or a scripture reference, you can go to Luke 12, 22 through 24. When Jesus was walking on this earth, he was challenging us. He was teaching us uh, and even now through his word to have faith in God and trust in him that he will provide. But you got people who they're worried and so they want you to be worried, want you to be worried about natural resources running out and so forth. We are not going to get mixed up in that because that is once again bondage. And on this channel, we don't we do not support people who want to uh, make other people fearful and worried and so forth because they have their agendas. OK. But I will tell you that having gone through my share of difficulties over the years, I know that storing up anything is not going to do too much of anything but hurt you in the long run because if you don't store enough it's a problem if you store uh, too much it's a problem that's why you get God in on it notice I said I when I stored up problems when God is involved you don't have those kind of problems like other people have our world right now is greedy for natural resources and our world and the leaders that are in our world will not hesitate to move some people away and out of places where they know that there is an abundance of natural resources to stockpile for themselves. When you are listening to these stories, when you are listening to people's worries and fears about natural resources, know that there is once again a story behind the story. And you need to find out what companies are involved with producing the propaganda you need to find out why is it that they are reaching out to the public all of a sudden and you also have to tie in what countries are the top countries that are producing these natural resources you see because if you know what countries are producing those natural resources then you know that this is why that particular country is in the media so much. And this is why there's a lot of rich people that are rallying around that particular country and why they are working so hard to build alliances with that particular country. Okay. So I hope that those of you all have received an eye opening when it comes to this particular message. Okay. Because you don't want to go into anything with one eye closed you actually you want both of your eyes wide open and you don't want to believe all sorts of propaganda because you could have your eyes wide open but still be walking blind and our God is not in support of those types of teachings those principles those doctrines that were created by men that appear like they are enlightening us when in fact they're doing nothing more than taking from us so think twice about some of these organizations out here that don't have anything to do with Jesus, God, or nothing else, but yet they want your money. Okay? God is calling some people to come up with their own organizations based on Christian precepts when it comes to natural resources. Okay? God is also raising up people to work with others on educating society about natural resources and why it is not a good idea to be uh, greedy and wasteful when it comes to natural resources okay so I thank you as always for taking time out of your schedule to listen you've been listening to YouTube in enterprise 7 feel free to subscribe also if you haven't given we do welcome donations and please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest blessings to you